Did you know that there are some singing teachers who believe that breath control is an unnecessary area of practice for the developing singer? These voice instructors think that your breath will take care of itself if you sing with good physical balance. Is this true? We better take a closer look at the subject of breath management to find out. And a warning right up front, today's video is a little more detailed than usual. So if you're keen to understand breath management in more depth, then keep watching. Sound check. Check one, check two. Hello everyone, Dr. Dan here with another singing tip designed to develop your voice and improve your sound. Very quickly, before we get into today's topic, I want to invite you to join my free email list. It's easy to join, simply go to my website, desjarts.com.au, sign up on the home page and you'll never miss another Voice Essentials video, no strings attached. I'll put the links in the notes sections below. So, breath management. It's currently a red hot topic, right, in the singing community, and it has been for the past 500 years. But did you know that voice scientists have only just in the past 15 years or so been able to observe what our body's muscles actually do when we breathe during singing? Up until the end of the 20th century, our methodologies for teaching breath, the main one being a poggio, had been developed using guesstimates, educated guesstimates, but guesstimates nonetheless. A poggio is an Italian term that literally means to lean on or support the breath. Many singing teachers still teach a poggio. You'd recognize the telltale signs of a poggio as a focusing your attention on an expanded rib cage along with a fairly active abdominal wall that purposefully leans inwards. For the better part of two centuries, a poggio has served classical singers reasonably well, albeit not perfectly, but with the development of popular contemporary musics came the need for a different approach. Sound check. Classical singing and contemporary singing are two different animals. They're not even from the same species. So if you'd like to learn more about the differences, be sure to watch my video, Do I Need to Learn Classical Voice Before I Sing Rock? Now, one of the main differences between the two is the muscular setup and the subsequent breath flow required to service the voice. At the risk of making an overly simplistic statement that is highly generalized, classical singing requires higher levels of subglottal pressure than does contemporary, because the contemporary vocal setup is generally thyroarytenoid dominant. Any surplus pressure immediately below the vocal folds will cause the voice, the voice to constrict. At this point, I do need to say that I do understand that in order for the voice to create an increase in volume, there must be an increase in pressure. Loud singing requires higher pressure levels. But what many untrained singers do, or classically trained voices that want to sing contemporary repertoire do, is they lean in with more pressure than is required, overcompensating with too much force. Again, the end result is often a tight, constricted throat that struggles to maintain pitch and tone. Sound check. So this brings us to the idea that working on breath management is a moot point. You may have even heard some singing teachers here on YouTube telling you to forget about working on your breath. One noteworthy advocate of the set and forget approach is Seth Riggs. In his celebrated text, Singing for the Stars, Seth writes, you do not have to work at breathing correctly unless you have poor posture or a tendency to raise your chest and shoulders and take shallow breaths, nor do you need to do any special exercises to strengthen your breathing muscles. If you maintain good posture when you sing and are careful not to let your chest collapse as you exhale, your diaphragm is able to move freely and be regulated by your abdominal muscles automatically. At first glance, Mr Riggs is suggesting that, all things being equal, you shouldn't need to attend to your breathing. Leave it alone, it'll take care of itself. Actually, we could apply this approach to most aspects of singing. Tone, pitch, alignment. For the fortunate few, the natural voice needs little adjustment. Their voice simply performs in a wonderfully balanced way. These people are the exception to the rule, however. For the rest of us, our physical instruments are given to creating sound in the most uncoordinated of ways, misaligned possible posture, aggressive muscular tension, inaccurate intonation, just to name a few. When you study Riggs's work further and that of other singing teachers who seem to advocate for a similar approach, it becomes apparent that they do understand that breath management is important. Actually, I don't disagree with Riggs when he writes, you know you have proper breath support when there is a balance between air and muscle. There will be a mutual and simultaneous coordination of the proper amount of air with the proper adjustment. 
adjustment of your vocal cords. Where I and countless others disagree with Riggs is the methodology of achieving the aforementioned balance between air and muscle. One can't simply expect that all the anatomical requirements will line up like good little ducks and perform in a coordinated manner. I subscribe to a systematic approach to the formation of automated breath management coordination. Chapman and Morris possibly say it best when they write, a gradual process of assimilation, combining constant affirmation to practice good postural alignment, use of physiologically correct inhalation and exhalation, and encouragement to find and maintain the emotionally connected primal sound base can take between one and two years of normal weekly lessons. And the voice science community agrees. International voice science heavyweight Professor Ingo Titzer asserts, given the unusual demand on a system that prefers to work automatically, it is not surprising that some training is necessary. In the inspiratory phrase, our abdominal muscles need to be trained to relax quickly and completely to allow maximum downward movement of the diaphragm. This sudden collapse of the abdominal effort with the bulging out of the midsection may be difficult for two reasons. First, some people need to almost chronically engage the abdominal muscles as a corset to tuck in their bellies. Second, the abdominal muscles are used extensively to provide breath support, adequate subglottal pressure in the expiratory phase. Vocologists who do not distinguish clearly between the inspiratory and expiratory phases may have their students or clients keep the abdomen tight all the time. Not only could this waste energy, but it also could restrict air intake. For most mere mortals, there simply are no shortcuts. Learning to breathe well for singing takes practice over an extended period of time. So, in answer to our opening question, no, breathing will not take care of itself. There are no shortcuts. There is a lot of learning in developing and maintaining the consistent breath stream required for great singing. So, let's do an exercise together now that is designed to improve the breath management of your breath stream. Sound check. I mentioned before that the predominant approach to teaching breathing is a podio. With new information to hand made available with new technologies, the latest research has given us a new methodology accent breath method. Accent breath focuses our attention away from the abdominal wall and directs out a sense of structure and support to the oblique muscles. Now, I'm never one to throw the baby out with the bathwater, so we're going to use an older podio exercise to work our breath stream all the while applying the new ideals of accent breath method. Very simply, we're going to inhale deeply over four counts and then we're going to exhale an SH for as long as we can. It's important to make sure your abdominal muscles remain flexible for the duration of the exhale. We can monitor our abdominals and our obliques by placing our thumbs on the obliques just above our hips and resting our fingers on our tummy. Now one final instruction before we give it a go. Don't allow any sense of tension to build up in your neck or your shoulders. All of your structure and support should be felt in the obliques. If you feel your larynx starting to valve at any point during the activity, Stop, swallow, and start the exercise over. The whole point of this exercise is to delegate the muscular responsibility of breath flow away from the laryngeal muscles. Okay, here we go. We'll aim to get to a count of around about 25. I'm gonna stand up for this, as I would recommend you to do. Let's commence. Inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five. How did you go? Many of you will have struggled to get past fifteen. That's okay, keep practicing. The track we just used for the activity is exercise 13 on the Voice Essentials CD, and as always, I'll put a link in the notes section below if you'd like to purchase the track. Now, developing good breath management is essential to great vocals because breath fuels the voice. So don't leave it to chance. Purposefully exercise your breath flow. Consistent air equals consistent notes. I know today's video has been a longer one than usual, but I really hope the deep dive has been helpful in clarifying the importance of working on your breathing. 
be sure to leave me a comment below letting us all know your thoughts on the subject. And if this is your first time here at Voice Essentials, thanks for sticking around until the end. It's my aim to develop your voice and improve, in, and improve your sound, and I aim to do that just right here on YouTube. So please subscribe and allow me to join you on your journey of vocal discovery. So as not to prolong the length of this video any further, I'll sign off for now. I'm Dr. Dan, sing well.